Hi everyone, it's Lara here from LK Yoga and today we're going to do a short little hip opening sequence. So this is going to be really great for pretty much anyone um, if you've got tight hips. So whether that's from running, cycling, sitting at a desk all day, sitting in a car all day, goodness knows, literally everything in human life stress um, causes our hips to tighten up. Um, so this is just a little hip opening sequence um, to help you with any tightness you might be experiencing. So the first thing we're going to do is come into bound angle pose. So we're just going to take the soles of the feet together. We're going to lift the chest up nice and high and just gently draw the shoulders back. From here we're going to start to lean forward just ever so slightly so we still want to keep the back quite straight right now. And we're just going to take the hands to the inside of the feet and gently rest them there. I'm going to try and keep the neck nice and long in line with the spine and then maybe take the elbows as you come a little bit deeper to the inside of the calf muscles so we can just press in and open up a little bit deeper. So is this is the start of our little sequence. We don't want to try and press too deep into anything. The muscles probably aren't that warm. I'd say if you've got a few minutes beforehand just to have like a little jog, jog on the spot, maybe just do a few leg swings, just get some blood flowing, that would be great not just taking it nice and gentle not pushing too deep if you are quite flexible then we can take the hands out in front and we can draw the forehead in to meet the feet so if we're in this this variation of the pose we're trying to sink the weight back over the hips as we are leaning forward so i'm trying to keep my hips pressing down even though the weight of the body is coming forward i can tuck the chin in towards the chest here too i'm just going to stay here for a few more seconds the longer you stay in these poses, generally the more benefit you're going to get from them, particularly if you're not coming too deep and we sort of take a sort of yin, yin style approach to the pose, you'll find that the sort of tightness um, at the beginning of the pose, you're, you're almost fighting it. Um, and then once you stay there for about 30 seconds to a minute or even longer, the body starts to really relax and let go, particularly if we've managed to slow our breathing down. Um, and we sink a little bit deeper and it comes to a point where it's actually more comfortable to stay in the pose than it is to come out. But from here, I'm afraid we are going to come out. So we're going to straighten up through the back. We're going to draw the knees together. We're going to twist to lie on our backs. Everyone's favourite yoga pose is lying on their backs. We're going to lie down. We're going to take the shoulders nice and broad. We've got a ponytail. Let's gently move that out the way. And from here, we're going to take the right leg to rest on top of the left leg. You might actually find that already this is enough. Um, and that is perfectly fine. Um, so what you can do though to intensify the pose is take the hands through to rest on the back of the hamstring. We're going to try and keep the shoulders nice and broad pressed into the mat and the neck nice and long still even though we're lying, lying down. We still want to try and avoid any punching in the upper body. If you want to go a little bit deeper still, you can take the hands to rest on the front of the knee. So we're going to squeeze the left knee in towards us and we're going to sort of think about pressing this right knee away. You can take the hands to rest on the knee and gently push it out. But I only advise doing this if you're already warm. We just want to take these stretches nice and gently. If you've been out for a run or a cycle or some form of exercise um, and you're using this as a bit of a cool down stretch, then just be mindful that you've been working and damaging those tissues and now is not the time to sort of go for hyper flexibility. We just want to give them a light, gentle stretch um, to aid recovery rather than over stretching and causing more damage and potentially spraining. So something I sometimes do when I'm holding this pose is just give the feet a little bit of a circle so we get a little bit of ankle motion going on, helping work our ankle mobility, which um, ever since humans developed shoes has probably not done it much good. So we're going to reverse the direction. Uh, one of my sort of favourite sort of physios um, it's released a load of great content, uh, it's Kelly Skerritt um, and he does loads of stuff with ankle mobility and sort of promotes walking around in barefoot. So I highly recommend if you can uh, walking around whenever you are able to in socks or barefoot just to help the feet get all the natural motions they're meant to experience that are sort of prohibited by the shoe. I'm going to switch over side. If you want to very quickly, you can just take the arms underneath the front and uh, the top leg just so that it rests, the belly of the calf rests into the elbow, lift the chest and just maybe gently rock the legs left and right. You can even take the leg just to sit in the crease of the elbows and just give it a little bit of a rock. So just loosening up your hips up a bit. And then from here, if you want to come out, we're just going to draw the left knee back in and gently place it on the right leg. 
You can come over to the other side. This time I'm going to take the left leg on top. I'm just going to square up, make sure I am nice and comfortable. And then again, same options as before. So I'm going to take my hands first of all, just to rest on the back of the hamstring. And then as I sort of sink into that stretch, I'm going to take my hands to rest on the back of the knee. And again, I'm just gently pressing the left knee away here. Nothing too extreme, keeping the shoulders back and down. And this time I'm going to point the toes and then flex the heels. And just a slightly different movement for your feet here. And all the time whilst we're working on these stretches, as much as we can, just trying to breathe nice and deeply. So on the inhale, we're going to let the lungs fill and expand so much so that you feel the rib cage lift. And then as we exhale, we're just going to let everything relax and sink into the mat. Maybe try and just get a little deeper into the stretch. But again, just being mindful. We're maybe not as warm as we should be, or we've done quite a strenuous exercise, or we've been doing sitting down in a different movement all day. All these things, and we should just take it nice and easy. Great. And then as we did with the other side, an option here for the last few seconds, just to take the arms through and underneath the top leg, and just let the belly of the calf rest in on the creases of the elbows, or maybe taking the elbows to either side of the um, front leg and just gently cradling the up in the leg here. Try to keep the chest nice and lifted, the core slightly engaged as you're doing this. And then drawing the right leg back in with the left and releasing the leg back down. From here, we're going to just tuck the legs underneath us, take the hands out in front of us and just press up briefly to back down the facing dog. So we've not done much opening through the hamstrings, so we're just going to have a quick pedal through the feet, not come too deep into this pose. I've got a video which I'll put in the description below to talk you through downward facing dog and crescent moon lunge, the next two poses, if you want to have a little bit more of an explore here. But for now, we're going to lift the left leg nice and high and step the left foot through to the top of the mat, drawing the right knee down. I would always take the right knee ever so slightly further back as I like to come quite deep into this pose. And from here, I'm going to take my hands to rest on the front knee, coming into a modified crescent moon lunge. So as with this pose, um, which you'll find in one of our other videos, um, we just want to make sure that the hips are facing forward, the shoulders are nice and open. With each exhale, I'm just trying to sink my weight sort of diagonally forward, so I'm sinking my hips down and forward. I'm still breathing nice and deeply. Just going to be here for a few breaths. So I can really feel with each exhale, I'm just getting a little deeper into the hip flexor, sinking forward. Whether or not this is um, visible, um, it's not always, it isn't always the case, but you will feel these little changes in your own body the longer you stay in the stretch. And from here, I'm going to take my hands to the inside of the left leg and walk the left foot out to the edge of the mat. I'm going to take a 45 degree angle with the left foot facing out and come into lizard pose. So for lizard, we can take the block underneath us if we'd like and we can rest the hands on the block. If we find it a little bit difficult to have them on the floor, you can use any height of the block. So if you um, are keeping it high, just bring the block in a little bit closer if that feels enough, then that's perfectly fine. Um, alternatively, you can try coming all the way down onto the elbows on the block or perhaps taking the elbows straight towards the mat. Just be mindful again that we're not super warm, we don't necessarily need to come too deep for these stretches to get the benefit that we're looking for. So just finding whatever option suits you. You can also come as I have to the outside edge of the foot and just let the foot open up towards the side. Again, we've always got the option to just gently press open the hip here, but again, just keeping it nice and easy for now. Nothing too deep or strenuous. Just a few more breaths here. And then we we'll slowly come back to our hands. If you can stay for about another 20 seconds in lizard, but for the sake of keeping this video to a reasonably short length, I'm going to transition to pigeon. So for pigeon, we want to try and keep the shin as close to parallel with the top edge of the mat as we can. You might find that you want to just draw the leg in ever so slightly. I always draw the right um, knee back to keep my hips para um, squared off facing forward and to help me sink down over the left hip. 
So from here, you've got lots of options as well. You can stay on the hands, you can come down to the forearms, or perhaps even take the forehead all the way down to the mat. So I'm really trying to sink this left glute down. If you're very tight, you can take a block or a cushion or something and just rest it under that glute and support it so the stretch isn't too intense for the hip. You can also come back to the recline variation we were just doing, where we created the figure of four shape recline pigeon, uh, right next to um, sort of the second pose that we did um, through this little video. So I'm just going to be here for a few breaths. This is a really nice one to start off the lap, start to relax. So you can maybe close the eyes if you want. And just let the breath deepen in just so slightly. I'm going to be here for another. 10 to 15 seconds, nothing too long today. And we're going to very slowly come back to our hands and press our way back to downward facing dog to come over to the other side. I'm going to tuck the toes on the back foot, start to lift my hips up to the ceiling. And then just give the left leg a bit of a wiggle, maybe turn out through the feet again. And then coming straight over to the right side. So on the inhale, lifting the right leg nice and high. And stepping the foot through to the top of the mat, drawing the left knee down. Find the modified crescent moon lunge on the other side. So I'm going to take the hands to rest on top of the right leg. If you want, you can take the arms up overhead. We're just focusing on a little hip stretch right now. So this is more than fine if that suits you. Trying to keep the chest nice and lifted. The shoulders, just the bottom of the shoulders, squeeze ever so slightly together, engaging the lats and keeping the chest nice and open, the shoulders drawn down the back. With each exhale, just see if we can get a little bit more of a sink into the left hip flexor. Breathing nice and deeply. There's a really great sequence also to do after you've had a bath. <laughs> Top tip, have a really warm bath and then do some light stretching and the body just sort of melts and sinks into it. Um, although only do that if you've not done anything too strenuous earlier in the day because again, you don't want to overstretch, but it really does feel great to do some stretches like this just before bed or just after a bath or something. Okay, then from here we're going to find our way into our lizard lunge on the other side. So we're going to take our hands down to the inside of the right leg. We're going to draw the right foot out to about 45 degrees at the edge of our mat. And again, we've got all the options we did before. So if you want, you can use the block. And just, it's actually easier for you to see on the side, so I will demonstrate. You can use the top edge of the block if you don't want to come too deep, if that feels intense enough. And if you want, you can come down onto a slightly lower angle of the block, taking it slightly further forward. You can maybe come down to rest on the forearms on the block, or perhaps just letting the foot open so that we can see the inside edge, um, sorry, outside edge of the foot, seeing the inside edge of the foot lift up, coming down all the way onto our forearms. So whatever works for you, I'm not going to be here for too long today. Also, if you find that it's a little bit uncomfortable on the knee, I generally find that these mats are with a very good cushioning and I don't have any problems. But sometimes uh, if you're using a NBR or slightly thinner mat, uh, like a travel mat or something, you might find it's quite uncomfortable. In which case, just, just grab a pillow or something and place it under your back knee. Just a few more breaths here. And slowly coming back towards the hands, we're going to find our way into pigeon pose on the other side. So just scooching the right foot over to the left side of the mat. Again, trying to find as close to parallel as we can with the top leg. You might find that you want to draw the heel in ever so slightly. And then from here, you can come down onto the forearms if that feels comfortable for you. Sinking the right hip down. Remember, you can take the block underneath. And then come to rest the forehead either on the hands or all the way down to the mat if that works for you. 
You're just finding an option here that feels comfortable for you, not too intense, and just letting yourself relax. Breathing nice and easy. On the inhale, letting the body just lift ever so slightly. On the exhale, letting everything sink and relax down. Being aware of any tension you might be holding in the muscles of the face or on the shoulders, perhaps even on the feet. And just making sure they remain very relaxed. Take a few more breaths here and there. And slowly coming back to the hands. From here we're going to tuck the toes on the back foot and gently press our way back to downward facing dog. Just giving the right leg a little bit of a wiggle. Maybe pedaling out through the feet one more time. Pressing into the hands, lifting the hips nice and high. And then from here we're going to drop the feet underneath this and just come to a gentle cross-legged position. Taking the palms to face up, resting on the back of the knees. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little um, hip opening series. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them to me below. Get in contact as per usual. Facegram, Facegram? <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Fusion, um, uh, email, website, you know it, just, or just message down below. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Namaste.